Hello, everyone. We're back at H360 Health Talk. And joining me again is Gabby Pasella. She is going to be continuing our conversation with her journey living with type 1 diabetes. Gabby, good to have you back. Thanks for having me. So, so you, you're, you're home. Your parents are doing the finger prick thing. You're getting injected. Now it comes time for you to go to school. Yes. Right? <laughs> and so kids being kids, one may not understand what's going on. Um, and two, there's might be some teasing going on. H how did you deal with just t one talking to your friends that you were diagnosed um, at school? You know, did you go down to the nurse to get the finger prick and mm -hmm. injections? How did how did all that work? Yeah, so every day I'd go down to the nurse, I believe three times. I'd go in the morning and then at lunchtime, before lunch, and I believe after lunch to make sure everything was okay. And that actually, that I did that all the way up until eighth grade. Were you assigned or did you start to see an endocrinologist while you were in the hospital, newly diagnosed? Yes, yes, he, uh, he retired. I now see a new one, but they were both great. And so that really, an endocrinologist is really the specialty that it's the physician that kind of man, helps you manage um, living with type one, educates you. Yeah. Um, now, over the years, as you um, progress and get older, technology changes, mm -hmm. right? So are you still doing the 10 to 12 finger pricks a day? No, no, thank God I'm not. But um, I recently, I got a Dexcom, which is a, it's a little, it's a little Bluetooth device with, um, has a little needle looking thing at the end and it, you put it in your stomach or on top of your stomach and the needle goes in and it measures your blood sugar and it shows you either on your phone or on a device um, every five minutes what your blood sugar is. So that you can even send your endocrinologist. He can look at your levels and help you manage from home, which is awesome. So you're, you're uploading, I would imagine, to a secure server yes. in the cloud. Your Dexcom is transmitting that data. Mm -hmm. Your endocrinologist could look over time and see what's happening. Exactly. And then call <laughs> you or say, hey, you know, Gabby, what's going on? Or, hey, you're doing really great. Yeah. Keep up the good work. Now, this Dexcom, um, is it a large device? I mean, it's Bluetooth, so it has to have some level of communication feature to it. It's fairly small. It's about this big, and it's just on my stomach don't really notice it or feel it um, and it's actually it's on my phone I could show you yeah you just slide over on your phone and it'll say your numbers it's not hooked up right now actually okay. but um, it'll show you your numbers and you could see it has a graph on it you could see if it's going up or down and if even if your number is going up or down it'll have an arrow on it so say I'm about to go out and drive my car Right? If my blood sugar is going down, it's probably not a good thing. Probably shouldn't drive or should probably take a snack with me. Yeah. And that's super helpful. Yeah. So uh, will the Dexcom give you push notifications? Will your phone beep to say, hey, you're getting in the danger zone here? Yeah. Time for, you know, a snack or something? Yeah. And definitely that, that's helpful for one, driving and two, sleeping at night. It'll wake me up at three in the morning if I'm, if I'm low which sometimes some people don't wake up from that and they need the glucagon shot. And what kind of a snack would you have? So if you're, if you're driving, for example, do you keep, are there special snacks that you have maybe in your glove compartment or sitting on the passenger <laughs> side? Yeah, I have, a, I have a box of juice boxes. Oh, you do? Yeah, I do. And I have some, I think they're like natural gummies. <laughs> I see. So what, what, are, what are some foods that really throw you off kilter a huge either spike and then and what are some foods that are really things that you should be eating to help maintain that steady level yeah so high carb foods like bagels pasta things like that will make your blood sugar just skyrocket, skyrocket. and uh, things like vegetables cooked vegetables fish chicken steak all that stuff that'll that'll fairly keep you balanced so when they say you know if you if you carb up mm -hmm. like maybe midday and then all of a sudden you know you get that spike and then all of a sudden you crash and that's exactly, when we find ourselves yeah. really tired and yeah. wanting to take that afternoon nap right yeah <laughs> so high protein low carb what about things like um, processed meats and 
cold cuts are is, is that something that you can enjoy or yeah yeah definitely those those aren't bad. They don't really affect me uh, in a bad way. You really want to just maintain kind of a low carb, somewhat of a protein diet, and that helps you out. Yeah, but as a type one diabetic, you could still you can still enjoy have ice cream and all that. You just need to give yourself the correct amount of insulin to make sure your blood sugar is not skyrocketing. So if you know if your girlfriends call you up and say, "Hey, it's Friday night, it's pizza night," you can <laughs> say, "Got it." You just know you're going to have to make an adjustment. Exactly. Yeah. Um, to maintain that level. Yep. And so your Dexcom, you said it might, I'm assuming by the size you showed me with your hand, it might be the size of a silver dollar or half a dollar. Yeah. Do you, is that something that you keep on all the time or do you have to change it every once in a while? Yeah, so you, you insert one every 10 days, you can do it from home. Um, and it's, it's similar to the pump where you have to, you stick the device on with the little mechanism thing with the button yep. <laughs> and uh, you do that and it stays on for 10 days and then it'll give you a warning on your phone when you're about 24 hours till it expires. So you'll take that off and do the same thing. Put a new one on. And it takes me three minutes maybe. Away you go. Yep. So I, I remember seeing kids in school um, back in, a, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say the, the year because I'll date myself, but they had the syringes, they had the vials. They were filling up the syringes. Mm -hmm. Is that what, you, when you have to inject, is that what you use? So when I first got diagnosed with diabetes, that's what I used, that's what my parents used. And um, then after that, I switched to a, a pump. And I was still a little too young for it. I, I know a lot of young children have the pump, but it just wasn't working for me. One, because it would, it would grab on door handles and whatnot and rip out and it was Ooh. just uncomfortable. And I was too scared to put it back in myself. So yeah. it was something, you know, I'm at school, my mom has to come put one in. It was just, it was a hassle. So I switched off the pump for a while. So when, when you say pump, I mean, t what does a pump do? Are you still injecting with the pump or how, how does that work? So a pump is a, it's a little device and it gives you a, a little bit of insulin every hour of the day instead of giving one huge shot at, at, in, at the night. Almost like a slow drip yeah, of, exactly. of insulin. And, and do you still, when you have the pump, are you still wearing a Dexcom or are you pricking your finger to get the levels? Or does the pump all, is it integrated all into one? It measures and gives you what you need at the time. So they don't, they don't currently have uh, both in one system, but um, you can have the, the Dexcom going at the same time as the pump. Okay, so now you're at the, on the pump. And how old were you when you were put on the pump? I must have been 10, but I, I 10. did switch off the pump. Yep. And I went to the, the, the insulin pen. Okay. So you click, you click the numbers and then you can inject yourself with it. And I just find it's, it's easier for me. I don't have to worry about the tube getting caught on anything. Or As a girl, it's harder to wear some clothes with it. It's, yeah, you know, I, would find that, I would find that annoying too, yeah. myself personally, yeah. <laughs> just, just teasing. Um, so, okay, so you're on the pump for a little while and that really is um, not conducive um, to your lifestyle for reasons. You might be pulling it out. Um, you're fashion conscious and want to wear, you know, nice things, but yet this thing to deal with. So you then, you, you go over to this pen and now, still wearing the Dexcom and using the pen. So does the Dexcom then measure your reading and then recommend what setting to put that pen at? Uh, or yeah. do you just know, or do you know how to do the calculation in your head? I'm not 100% sure how to do the calculation, but the Dexcom will tell you your number and there's different apps that you can get on your phone that you put your blood sugar in, how many carbs you're, you're gonna eat, and then it'll give you the number of how, much, how many units you should get but you do have to plug in um, your bolus rate, all, all the different things. Yeah. So this is something, I mean, you, you're, you're dealing, this is a nonstop process for you, right? Yep. This is between the Dexcom, every 10 days changing that, the app, making sure you're doing that, making sure you have a, you know, a pen that's got enough insulin in it and ready to go, um, and then always measuring and kind of estimating what you think you're going to be eating at any given meal mm -hmm. or snack time and then adjusting for all these calculations. Um, is this something that you're going to be doing for the rest of your life? 
It is. Yeah, <laughs> unless they come out with some magical cure. <laughs> yeah, boy, wouldn't that be great to come out with something like that? Um, yeah. So, so do you have many friends that are living with type one? I do. <laughs> I do know a few people that just didn't meet through any di diabetic connection, but just through other friends. There's yeah. a lot of people who do have it. And people worse than me, you know, they have diabetes and they have celiac, or they have diabetes and they have a, another autoimmune disease. Yeah, yeah. So what would you, what would you tell a young seven-year-old girl that is in the hospital and just hears those words um, that they have uh, and are gonna be living with type one diabetes? I would tell them to take it seriously. <laughs> um, don't mess around with it at all. You know, make sure you're taking care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself now, you'll have problems in the future. And it, it may it may seem like at seven, every every little speed bump kind of seems like the end of the world, right? Yeah. When you're seven years old. But but now looking back, I mean, your advice is to you know, look. You gotta take this seriously. Take care of yourself now because. If you don't, you're going to be, you know, you could end up in a worse situation later in life. If you were to sit down with, you, you mentioned something at the beginning. You said that when you're, you were in, diagnosed in the hospital for the first time, it really, it threw your parents, you didn't use these words, but it, you know, it threw them into a tailspin. They were extremely concerned, yeah. didn't know what was going to be on the horizon, didn't understand diabetes, what that was going to mean for you and what you could not couldn't do. But if you were to sit down with a, a husband and wife whose child at seven just had been diagnosed with type one, what would you tell the parents? I would tell them to that it's going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be okay and that they should, they shouldn't make it so that the child can't do anything. As a kid, I couldn't I couldn't go to sleepovers and all that because my parents were so worried. But later on, they they started letting me do that, and I think they should keep a keep an eye out on the child for a while, make sure they're doing okay. But once they have a, a handle, a grip on what they're doing, I think they should let them go back into into what they like to do as a as a child: play sports, go out with friends, yeah, all that stuff. Would you recommend? Um, you know, how, how do you how do you tell? let's say you're you're going to a sleepover mm -hmm. um, and you're young and you're maybe not newly diagnosed but you're new to the journey of living with type 1 and you go over to your to your first sleepover did your parents talk to the family and say hey you know just so you know Gabby is yeah. living with diabetes and this is what she can and cannot do so and if you see these things um, if she's you know acting weird or maybe is losing her balance or what, whatever those things are, yeah. it could be a reaction to, you know, not having enough insulin or your sugar levels spiking or. Yeah, of course. Um, in the, in the beginning, it was almost like my, my parents had to have a meeting, <laughs> a meeting before letting me sleep over anywhere. They would give them their, their contact numbers, my grandparents' numbers, everything. They would have a, a packet on me almost on what to do. And <laughs> the only fun part about it was I did get a cell phone at a young age, so I'd be able to well, call my parents you go. <laughs> if something happened. And um, I was I was pretty good at recognizing if my blood sugar was high or low. And then I would test and you know, can I please have some orange juice, something like that. And of course, they'd, any parent is uh, just as worried as my parents. Sure. And they'd get it for me right away. Yeah. Well, Gabby, thanks for sharing your story with us. Uh, it was great seeing you, great job uh, on the daily doses, and uh, I wish you all the best at college. Thank you.